A common issue with acne treatments is that they can cause irritation, which can be a challenge in those who have sensitive skin and acne. In this video, I want to share some dermatologists improved tricks and strategies to treat acne in those who have sensitive skin. Now, the first thing to think about is benzoyl peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide is a great acne treating ingredient. It both can help reduce acne bacteria, it can help unclog pores, and it can also help prevent the development of antibiotic resistance when we're using things like topical antibiotics in our acne regimen. However, benzoyl peroxide is notorious for being quite irritating to the skin. So for those who have sensitive skin, the first thing to do is we want to try and minimize how much time that benzoyl peroxide is sitting on the skin. Instead of using a leave-on product like a gel or a cream, using a benzoyl peroxide wash and leaving it on for just 30 to 60 seconds at the most can often be a helpful way to try to reduce irritation from benzoyl peroxide. In addition, it's important to use a benzoyl peroxide product that's not too strong. For the face, there's really no reason to use a benzoyl peroxide product more than four to 5% in strength. When we look at clinical trials, 10% benzoyl peroxide in the face doesn't really seem to work any better than 4% benzoyl peroxide and not very much better than 2.5% benzoyl peroxide. So for those who have sensitive skin, using a lower strength benzoyl peroxide wash on the face can often be a helpful strategy to make sure we can use this very effective acne treatment in our regimen. In addition to benzoyl peroxide, we often think of topical retinoids also as a foundational acne treatment. However, for those with sensitive skin, using a topical retinoid or retinol sometimes can be really hard to get to work. The first thing is, don't actually feel like you're stuck using a topical retinoid or retinol in your regimen. There are lots of acne treatments out there. We've talked about benzoyl peroxide and we're going to discuss some more later in this video, but we don't need to have a topical retinoid in our regimen to treat acne. And for those who have trouble tolerating it, even with these strategies I'm going to lay out next, it's fine to not have a topical retinoid in our acne treatment plan, and we can still find ways to get to our skincare goals. Now, when it comes to incorporating a topical retinoid successfully for those who have more sensitive skin, the first thing to do is really to prioritize consistency over intensity. We don't need to try and use the strongest retinol or the strongest topical retinoid that we can find on the shelf. Using something that your skin can handle and using it consistently every other day or every other day is much more important than using something that's way too strong and causes irritation where you're just using it once a week or a few times a month. When it comes to picking a topical retinoid or retinol that's going to work well, often adapalene or trenoin tend to be milder than other ones like tazeratine or triferritine. So that's a place to start trying to start with these milder glasses of topical retinoids. In addition, the vehicle, the kind of cream or lotion that it's in can make a big difference here. There are clinical trials that show that tazeratine lotion is substantially less irritating than tazeratine cream. When we have this polymeric emulsion gel technology, it can help to distribute that retinoid more evenly and slowly on the skin, which can reduce irritation. So trenoin lotion and tazeratine lotion have this technology and that can help to reduce irritation. In addition, there is a new topical retinoid benzoyl peroxide combination product where they're micro-encapsulated. And the idea here, again, is to distribute more evenly and slowly on the skin. And when it comes to encapsulation with benzoyl peroxide, we see that this can help reduce irritation in rosacea, and we likely would see something similar in acne. Now, there are no head-to-head -head studies like we have with these lotion formulations showing that this trenoin benzoyl peroxide micro-encapsulation product is less irritating than other forms of trenoin and benzoyl peroxide, but mechanistically we might expect it to be, and so that's another option when it comes to choosing a product. So picking retinoids that are on the milder side, like adapalene trenoin, picking lower strength concentrations, and then using these advanced vehicles like these lotion technologies to help reduce irritation can be the first part of incorporating a topical retinoid or retinol into our skincare regimen. Now next, we can think about how we use it. We can use a moisturizer before and after applying that topical retinoid, we call this the sandwich method. This can also help to reduce irritation with topical retinoid use. We can make sure we're applying it to dry skin. So when we put that retinoid on, making sure the skin is dry, not immediately applying it after we wash our face, that can also help to reduce irritation. I also wanna think about how much topical retinoid we're using. You don't need a lot. Just a pea-sized amount should be enough to kind of dab it on your face to cover the entire face, a similar amount you could use on the chest and back. So make sure we're not overdoing it and using too much topical retinoid. 
So when it comes to successfully integrating a topical retinoid product into our acne skincare routine, for those with sensitive skin, we want to make sure we're picking retinoids on the milder side using a milder strength, considering lotion formulations to help. And then when we're using them, we want to use that sandwich method of moisturizer, retinoid moisturizer. We want to make sure that we're not applying too much, and we want to make sure that we're applying it to dry skin. Now before we get into some other acne treatment strategies for those with more sensitive skin, if you found this video helpful so far, please pop that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Your support really means a lot to me and it's what makes these videos possible. Moving beyond benzoyl peroxide and topical retinoids, we have a bunch of other acne treatments that can be really helpful for those with more sensitive skin. Things like azelaic acid, while not quite as effective maybe as other acne treatments, they do tend to be milder and less irritating. Azelaic acids available as prescription, there are also 10% over-the-counter options that are available. So azelaic acid can be a nice option for those who have more sensitive skin, especially those who are bothered by redness or dark marks as well, since it can help with these in addition to treating acne. Salicylic acid is another kind of gentler acne wash that can help as part of an acne routine. It can be a little bit drying, but it's often easier tolerated than benzoyl peroxide or other acne products. So that's another consideration for something that we can work in to an overall acne routine for those with more sensitive skin. And then we have a bunch of product categories that tend to not be irritating at all. There are topical anti-androgens like clascoterone, which can address the hormonal causes of acne in both men and women, and we have other videos on the channel about that medication. We can think about topical antibiotics like flindamycin, which tend not to cause any irritation at all and can be a good team with other acne-fighting ingredients like benzoyl peroxide. And then we can think about things like sulfacetamide cleansers, which again, tend to be very gentle and not irritating, maybe not as effective as some of our other foundational acne treatments, can, but can be a good part of an overall acne treatment regimen. Going beyond topical treatments for acne, we can also think about pill medicines or systemic treatments for those who have more sensitive skin. Sometimes just we can't put together a topical regimen that's gonna be effective enough and well tolerated enough, and that's where these other approaches can help. Things like oral antibiotics, hormonal therapies like combined oral contraceptives or spironolactone, or even isotretinoin. And there are a bunch of videos on the channel going through those in more detail for those who are interested, so check those out. And finally, we could think about treatments for acne that are procedures, things like laser. There are 17, 26 nanometer laser treatments, AviClear and Acura, we discussed these on some other videos on the channel, that can be very effective for acne, and they're not gonna have that irritation problem that we see with some of our topical acne treatments. So for those with sensitive skin, this can be a helpful option either as a standalone treatment or in combination with other acne treatment strategies. A final tip for treating acne in those with sensitive skin is not overdoing it. We do not need a 10 scap skincare routine with a whole bunch of different irritating products stacked on top of each other. Doing that is gonna result in an inability to tolerate the regimen. It's gonna to lead to poor outcomes. And so we wanna start simple. We wanna focus on ingredients that we know are gonna be effective and not irritating like what we've discussed in this video and gradually build. Don't start 15 things at once. Start slowly and build up a regimen that you can handle. Again, consistency beats intensity when it comes to treating acne. We don't need the most complicated regimen. We don't need every toner that we see on TikTok or Instagram. We can keep it simple. We can focus on high value, evidence-based treatments that we know work and then build up a regimen until we get to our skincare goals. To summarize, when it comes to treating acne and those with more sensitive skin, we wanna focus on choosing versions of products that are gonna be less irritating. So using lower strength, four to 5% or less benzoyl peroxide washes, using milder and lower strength topical retinoids like Adapli and Trinoin, thinking about optimized vehicles that can help reduce irritation like some of these lotion formulations, and then picking products that have low to no irritancy potential like clascoterone, a topical antiandrogen, like topical antibiotics, like sulfacetamide, like azelaic acid and salicylic acid. So we have a lot of options out there that can help to treat acne in those with more sensitive skin. As long as we're thoughtful about our approach, we don't overdo it, we put together a regimen that makes sense, we can reach those skincare goals. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please pop that like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support really means a lot to me. In addition, ask me your questions about acne in the comments below and share your experiences with finding regimens that work for sensitive skin. Until next time, see ya.